Asia is a new syndrome, which means autoimmune syndromes induced by adjuvant. It's a new syndrome, which refers to several conditions that not necessarily are full characterized autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma, which are induced by chronic stimulation of the immune system by substances which may react as adjuvants, mm -hmm. namely that they stimulate chronically the immune system in some time uh, for the benefits of the subject to get an immune reaction, but in this case the reaction is unnecessary and leads to the emergence of this new sign and symptoms. Actually, the AGR was unrecognized for decades. And the first note of the AGR came out following some studies on the Gulf Syndrome, in which it has been shown that many of those soldiers who complain about their severe fatigue, cognitive impairment, myalgias, and arthralgias, they were the soldiers who were not deployed to the Gulf area. This raised most probably the question of whether it was the, it were the vaccines who induced the Asia syndrome. So right now, the Asia syndrome falls in the category of rheumatologist and neurologist. Yet, depending on the different clinical manifestation, it may fall in any discipline in internal medicine. By and large, most probably the AGI is due to the chronic stimulation of the immune system. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are some specific adjuvants which were already shown to induce the AGI. For instance, the aluminum. Aluminum is the oldest, the cheapest, and the most efficient adjuvant so far. And this is the reason why it is employed in so many vaccines, um, uh, even nowadays. In a syndrome called macrophage myofasciitis syndrome, or MMF, described first by Romain Gerardi in France, he showed that the children and the adults who were vaccinated by hepatitis C virus, which contains the aluminium, they developed this severe myalgia with the neurological manifestations, including cognitive impairment and some kind of dizziness and inability uh, to uh, concentrate as well as unfresh sleep. And following many studies, he was able to demonstrate that the aluminum is deposited in the muscle and then wanders from the muscles via the macrophages to different organs and especially penetrate the blood-brain barrier. So the MMF is actually part of the Asia syndrome. It is believed also that not only the Gulf War syndrome vaccine, etc., but also an entity called the sick building syndrome. Mm -hmm. People who stay in a room in an apartment and they develop all the clinical manifestations that I have mentioned. And then once they move from the same room to the other room or to another building, then they feel better, they completely recover. And it is believed that in that room, uh, uh, there is some standard substance which reacts or behaves like the adjuvant. Now, having mentioned the aluminium as a specific um, a material which is used and employed as uh, an adjuvant, aluminium is widespread. It's one of the most common um, materials in the world. But we, during daily life, we use many substances and many equipments which are purely done from aluminium. 
just as a joke, I will mention that I have seen a, an advertisement now in the Time magazine that a man of steel drives a car of aluminum, and the car is Mercedes. So this raises the question whether rich people that drive Mercedes may develop more autoimmune disease than people who drive, for instance, Honda, who is not done from uh, aluminum. Yes, first of all, vaccines are very widespread. Mm -hmm. I would like to say in the uh, beginning of my words that definitely I'm not against vaccine. Vaccines are the best medical development that humankind had in the last 300 years. They have brought almost eradication of some of the viral diseases. However, it has to be conceivable that when you give to million people an active substance, and it is an active substance, being the viral particles or synthetic particles, emulsified in adjuvant, which is supposed to enhance the immune reaction, that among those billions of people, there will be no people who will react in an adverse way to these injections. So we have to identify these people. First of all, we have to diagnose them, to treat them. Some of them should be compensated because the vaccine quite often are imposed either by the country, either by the government, or by the employer, and so forth. In regard to the silicon implants, there are countries in which it is more prevalent than the others, but it's quite a very common cosmetic operation. It brings and it leads to a better mood for the lady or even if the man is doing it, and therefore it is important. It's part of our health. Yet again, claiming that the silicon is completely inert and it doesn't leak and doesn't wander in our body and doesn't induce granulomas is misunderstanding. And especially if the silicon is wrapped in a bad way, like in the recent years we have heard about this French company, PIP, who distributed more than 300,000 uh, silicons who were easily ruptured. So, but not necessarily only when the silicon rupture, there is a leakage. Also with an unruptured silicon, there is a small nanoparticle of of uh, silicon which wander in the body and therefore we can find the reaction in different parts of the body, in the hands, in the chest and so forth. Now, they are quite prevalent. Luckily enough, the syndrome itself is rare. Like autoimmune diseases, which are definitely induced by infections, they are not as common as the infections because we always need the concert play of the infective agent and the genetic material. The same with the uh, Asia syndrome. It has been found that it's more prevalent in subjects who carry a specific genetic background, which is HLA-DRB1. This is, by the way, the same HLA that was found also among those who developed this side effect of uh, Asia uh, following uh, vaccines. So maybe in the future, when more personalized medicine uh, will prevail, we will be able to screen the people and to avoid the Asia syndrome by avoiding some vaccines or changing in the vaccine the type of adjuvant which might be the one which will not be associated with um, the Asia syndrome. And I would like to emphasize that currently there are novel adjuvants which we have to test and to see whether they are as efficient as the old and good adjuvants, but might have less side effect than the um, aluminum and the other old adjuvants. Mm -hmm.
We have published the criteria in an extensive article, which was the first one to inform and to crystallize the um, uh, Asia syndrome in the Journal of Autoimmunity. And we have classified it as we do usually in different autoimmune diseases, namely into major criteria and minor criteria. And the major criteria uh, entails clinical manifestations, which um, uh, uh, include, for instance, uh, the uh, severe fatigue. And when we say about severe fatigue, which is not caused by an effort, you wake up with the feeling of being tired, uh, unfresh sleepiness, uh, as well as pains in your muscles, which is called myalgia, arthralgia. But as I mentioned before, many of these patients may evolve into a more well-defined um, autoimmune condition. So for instance, if they will evolve into scleroderma, systemic sclerosis, they will have a tight skin. They will have the complication of the lung uh, involvement. They may have the complication of the kidney involvement and so forth. I just recently uh, sat with a famous professor in England in his clinic, and to my surprise, he told me that just three weeks ago, he saw a patient who developed polychondritis, which is actually inflammation of the cartilage over different organs in our body, but mainly in the face. And uh, following inquiries, he found that it developed following um, silicon transplant and the patient is going to explant this transplant. In part, the mechanism may involve the chronic stimulation of the immune system. So as you know, when we have a stimulation of the immune system, we may develop inflammatory cytokines like interferon gamma, interferon alpha, uh, IL-1, IL-6, TNF alpha, and so forth. So in part, the um, uh, the syndrome may be induced by this avalanche of cytokines due to the chronic stimulation. This chronic stimulation may also involve the opening of the blood-brain barrier and therefore penetration of different substances into the brain. Uh, in one of the um, um, uh, or one of the mechanisms which was well defined is the aluminum deposition in our body following the injection or following the exposure and also the um, wandering of this aluminum to the brain through the blood brain barrier. Actually, when you expose mice and also human beings to aluminum, you get very similar clinical symptoms that you get with the uh, Asia syndrome. In the past, we physicians were exposed to this aluminum toxicity of the brain where patients went through dialysis and the dialysate um, fluid contained the aluminum and actually uh, diffused into the body through the barrier and then there was an aluminum intoxication and the patient complained very similarly uh, to the Asia syndrome. I want to mention that this mechanism um, by ways of chronic stimulation also induces different autoantibodies. Now, not necessarily the autoantibodies indicate a specific autoimmune disease. So it might be a combination of anti-DNA antibody, which is more classical for SLE, but also anti-mitochondrial antibodies, which may indicate primary biliary cirrhosis. So, um, only after years of evolution, as I mentioned, some of the patients may evolve to one or another disease or sometimes to a combined full defined autoimmune diseases. The 
question of environmental factors in addition to the um, uh, silicon implants as well as the uh, adjuvants in the vaccine is not known yet. But I can assume from knowledge, reading, literature, that aluminum in different uh, materials used in a daily life may be associated with that. Toxin in the environment, for instance, it has been found that in the United States, in one of the towns, there was a significant increase in lupus um, uh, cases. And following inquiry, it has been found that it was some kind of a sewage system or a drainage system in which toxic material was uh, drained to there and concentrated there. And uh, the people in the area actually complained about inspiring or smelling or difficulties uh, in the air. So saying in a large context, I would say that it might be that part of what we call idiopathic autoimmune diseases, they, they are caused by toxic materials which may react like the adjuvants in the Asia syndrome. It may contain aluminum, it may be other metals which are known to induce autoimmune diseases. There is no knowledge about geographical distribution. We do know that many of the autoimmune diseases are more prevalent as you go, go further from the equator. It was believed and it is believed that it's the lack of exposure or the decreased exposure to sun and induction of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And today we know that vitamin D may play an instrumental role in all autoimmune diseases. For instance, when we have analyzed more than 40 different autoimmune diseases, we found low levels in comparison to the healthy population at the same geographical area. So I am not aware about the Asia. The Asia is a new syndrome which is now recognized. We have papers now from the Philippines, we have papers from Mexico, we have papers from all over the world. But these are just small series of cases. There was no epidemiological study known or done to analyze the geographical distribution. But I believe that eventually we will find that it is related to the ge geographical distribution of these toxic materials. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there were, there were papers from two countries. One of them was from um, uh, Finland showing an avalanche of cases of a disease that now is recognized as an autoimmune one called narcolepsy, sudden attacks of sleeping, which appeared following the H1N1 epidemic and vaccines. Now, having said that, I would like to emphasize that this disease is recognized in Finland and is strictly associated with HLA BR1, 6 2 And um, uh, when the vaccine was delivered after the epidemic, there was like 13-fold increase in this geographical area of this narcolepsy, which may be now considered an autoimmune disease. So the geographic distribution in this case was not to the substance, but to the genetic constellation of the uh, people who live in the area. Since Finland is a small country of close to five million people, and the intermarriages is high, you may assume that one of the genetic material, which by the way could give you a benefit in evolution, more prevails in this area than in other areas. The future direction should be um, directed to um, 
understand better the mechanism, develop better um, adjuvants, especially in vaccine. Because with vaccines, we are dealing with billions of people sometimes who are vaccinated. And we would like to minimize at least these side effects. We should learn from the Asia to better understand the etiology of other autoimmune diseases which currently are uh, regarded as idiopathic, which means that we are idiots and we don't know the pathology. I mean that they are, we don't know the etiology. And I would like not to see in the future the sentences, autoimmune diseases have an unknown etiology, because we are coming closer to better understanding the etiology. Also, I have still a perplexion about those women who have these silicon implants, whether to expand the uh, implants or not. But there is no guarantee that by explanting the um, uh, silicon implants, the patient will recover completely. And then she lose her implants and still have the Asia syndrome. Again, having said that, there are a few cases in which explanting the silicon implants uh, led to a complete recovery of the patient from the Asia syndrome. So I would like to understand better whether to instruct the patient, those who suffer from the Asia syndrome, whether to explant these implants or not. So there is a lot when a new syndrome is crystallized, mm -hmm. a lot of research is going all over the world and I hope that in the future we will be able to better define who are those who are candidate or at risk to develop the syndrome and to avoid it before we develop it. There is no screening for Asia because we don't have a surrogate marker that we can screen for them. Mm -hmm. uh, my advice to the clinician is uh, to pay more attention to the past history of the patient. Always to ask about vaccines, when the vaccines were delivered. I would like uh, in the future that the clinician will diagnose this patient and may help them uh, first of all, for compensating them if they deserve the compensation. But these patients suffer, they were completely healthy, they were vaccinated, and suddenly they developed the disease. Um, so better understanding of the symptoms, the signs, even the serological markers, and knowing the syndrome may help to identify the condition at a very early stage. The therapy should be the same therapy as for autoimmune diseases. Until we will understand it better, uh, maybe to switch to other drugs rather to uh, the old drugs that we are using currently.